I'm glad you came. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. You may now be seated. Good morning, Stevens Falcons. Today is April 28, 2016. I'm Melody, and these are your morning announcements. Speech and debate will be having meetings every Tuesday after school. If you're interested, go to A117 or speak with the sponsors of Speech and Debate, Ms. Trevino. Now is the season when seniors will begin receiving acceptance letters from colleges and universities. Seniors are reminded to turn in their copies of their acceptance letters to Ms. Brantley and the Go Center. Seniors, if you've received a scholarship, please bring a copy of it to Ms. Brantley in the Go Center ASAP. Now is the time of year for college acceptances. Seniors, if you have been accepted to a college, please bring a copy of the acceptance letter to Mrs. Brantley in the Go Center. Teachers, have your announcements played here. Log into the Stevens Google site, click on the announcements link, and then fill out the form provided. This concludes your morning announcements. I'm Melody, and have a great day, Falcons. Okay. Hi, I'm Victoria, and I'm a member of a cheerleading team here at Stevens High School. And we're selling tumbler cups to fundraise for our competitions at the end of the year for only $20. If you're interested in buying the cup, please feel free to find me or any other cheerleader on the team to give you more information about the cup or to purchase a cup. Thank you for listening, and have a great day. Don't open that door. If he wants to get in, he has to go around through to the cafeteria entrance. Why? He needs to get to class. Do you know him? Did he show you his ID? No. Then how do you know he goes here? I don't. Exactly. That creates, if you open that door, that creates a safety hazard. He needs to go in where there's an administrator. So what you're saying is anyone coming through class through the portal doors has to go by the cafeteria doors? Yes. What's more important, their convenience or your safety? You may have been hearing about it on the news lately, but you don't really have a clue of what it is. You may have been asking, just like many others, what is the Zika virus? Well, I talked with Mr. Wall, the AP environmental science teacher and aquatics teacher at John Paul Stevens High School, for answers. Zika virus is part of the same family of viruses as dengue and yellow fever and chikungunya viruses. They're all what are called flaviviruses, and they are all really little. Uh, they have RNA, and they're spread by mosquitoes. So now that we have a clue of what it is, how do you get it? 
There have been a couple of cases uh, that are yet to be verified of actual sexual transmission of Zika virus, but usually it's spread by mosquitoes. So what are the effects of the Zika virus? With Zika for adults, it's really not that bad. You get things like pink eye, uh, rash, fever. But if you're a pregnant woman, it has been linked with microcephaly. What that means is that whenever the baby is actually born, it has an extra small head, which means it also has an extra small brain, which means that it'll have developmental problems. Here in the United States, do we really face a threat? And if so, do we need a vaccination for it? Because of Zika being limited to mostly Central and South America, some parts of Africa and Southeast Asia where they don't really have that good of health care, and because it's spread generally by mosquito bites, I really don't see a point in having vaccinations essentially because it isn't really needed. So far, have there been any deaths linked to the Zika virus? There haven't been any deaths linked to Zika. Once that tide changes, then I can see it maybe. But with right now, it's a self-limiting disease. You're going to be sick for maybe from two to seven days. And after that, you get over it. So if we travel, how can we protect ourselves? Are we putting ourselves at risk? I think it'd, it'd be a good idea if you were considering going to vacation in those countries, say during like spring break or over the summer, to at least have mosquito repellent with you, to use a bed net whenever you sleep, and wear clothing that covers up most of your extremities and not go out whenever the 80s mosquitoes are most active. But besides that, not really.